All right, so what do we got now? 23.55. All right, let's do our knight at 3, g3, bishop g2. All right, so guys, so basically, this one looks like we're going to go into king's Indian attack mode, lesson 79, because now we're going to insert e4. Now, notice that they have one, two, three pieces putting pressure on e4, but we don't mind it, because when they take, we could just remove the knight, and then that's going to be a pin on, on it. So, rook e1. Now, when they castle, I could just do e5, Bobby Fischer style, or those of you who are, I know many of you have tried, and you're like, you know what, I cannot get the attack going. So, you could take here, and then pawn to d4. That's it. Now, we're playing a more positional, more strategic game. Now, c3. Notice how there's a, there's a hole on c5. So, why not... Actually, let me go knight e5. So, a uh, good square for my knight on e5, good square for my knight on c5. Um, knight e4. Well, let me just go knight e4. Hmm. Okay, a4 again undermining this pawn chain, and then I could just uh, I could just put pressure on on c4. Okay, taking with the pawn, taking with the knight, taking with the pawn, nice outpost. Now I could take, take on c4, uh, takes, takes. All right, taking on c4. Now they cannot take on c3 because I could do queen takes queen and then taking on, taking on b7. All right, how about knight d6 now? Take, takes, takes. All right. Now, of course, taking the work. Because pawn takes, queen takes, and then pawn to c4, so we're pinning that, we're pinning that knight. Um, we gotta look into knight c3, and that's okay, they could get the pawn back. Yep. Now, what if queen b3? Hmm. What if queen b3, even knight b5? Takes, takes. Queen c2. Okay, I gotta do queen d3. And the reason why is because I need to keep an eye out now. I need to keep an eye out on this on this knight. So bishop takes, of course, we take back. Now this bishop, we gotta decide if we want it to go to a4 or to a3. I think I'm gonna go with a3. Now rook c1 looks promising. Okay, so how about rook c1 now? All right, so activating our pieces. Yep. Now this has to be in the air. Now guys, notice how d6, we talked about this on lesson 51, we kept talking about it. d6 was the weak square. Actually, we had a lesson recently, 122, I think. All right, so we got this one. Uh, nice game. Not sure that we played that well, but what I wanted to stress is how that d6 square became or actually the decisive factor in this, in this game. So from the moment uh, they took only five, we could have taken with the rook. 
but we take with the pawn and we talked about this at the beginning of the stream that pawn from lesson 79 kings in an attack we know that it's a great outpost on d6 but also we're keeping pieces away from the king side and then if you pay attention to it the knight went straight for it then knight goes to d6 after that all of our pieces are uh, just controlling that that powerful square on d6 knight f4 activate the rook queen f3 now the knight don't forget if you get a knight to the outpost it means nothing unless we take advantage of it unless we capitalize on the squares that the knight is attacking we're interested on all of these but in this case i'm more interested on the ones on the king side because that's where the king is okay uh, so take the bishop replaces it and now it's the bishop is going to help us by putting the rook on the seventh rank and that's it rook moves i mean queen moves and then check and, and checkmate